Hello everybody and welcome to Letterboxd Book Club. I am Mackenzie. And I'm Claire. And today we will be discussing Haunting Adeline, which is by H.D. Carlton, which is cat and mouse duet number one. Yep. H.D. Carlton <laughs> sounds like a made up name, so I'd love to know who it really is. Uh, according to the Goodreads profile, presumably a female in the profile pic, so... It's, it's, an, it's a pretty cool, like, alias if it is. Or a pseudonym. Just like Casey Henry? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Casey Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Kenzie, when you're ready, kick us off with the blurby or the description or whatever you want to... Whatever you're feeling. And this is right. this this week is Halloween, so it's a very... No, it's not. It's next week. Kenzie, by, oh, the, wait, time this, the-, <laughs> by the time this book is released, you dumbass. <laughs> My god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, yes. When this book is released, it will be Halloween. It's Halloween! Yes, pee pee. This book is known is known as that as that like TikTok stalker sensation yeah. type of book as well. So Yeah, sorry, I forgot that we pre record everything. <laughs> <laughs> we record and edit day of. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, fuck no. You have so much free time. Uh before we begin, I have a hot drink. I have a cold drink. I have a healthy snack and an unhealthy snack. Actually, I don't believe in the word unhealthy snack. I have fruit snack and cake snack. <laughs> love it, love it. I have nothing because I don't feel like having anything right now. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I guess I'll go fuck myself. <laughs> All right, I will read the th- words. Would you like the fast version or the slow no. <laughs> no, no. Keep it neutral. Neutral. All right. Coming in at a, with a hot 3.57 stars. The manipulator. I can manipulate the emotions of anyone who lets me. I will make you hurt, make you cry, make you laugh and sigh. But my words don't affect him, especially not when I plead for him to leave. He's always there, watching and waiting, and I can never look away. Not when I want him to come closer. The shadow. I didn't mean to fall in love, but now that I have, I can't stay away. I'm mesmerized by her smile, by her eyes, and the way she moves, the way she undresses. I'll keep watching and waiting until I can make her mine, and once she is, I'll never let her go. Not even when she begs me to. Oh. Read the Lex bit as well. Yeah. While not required, it is highly suggested to read the novella Satan's Affair first. This book was previously banned on Amazon due to the trigger warning. Please (laughs) read reviews or go to the author's website. Yep. Also, I'm going to quickly read the important note at the front of the Kindle. I don't know if it's on the physical book, but it is on the Kindle. Oh, yeah, I was going to say. So, important note. None of these conspiracies derive from anti-Semitism or QAnon, but from my own demented imagination, common conspiracies in the media and many occult horror movies my dad used to watch growing up. This book ends on a cliffhanger. The contents are very dark with triggering situations, such as non-dub con between the main characters, graphic violence, human trafficking, stalking, child trafficking, child sacrifice... Mentions of child death and explicit sexual situations. There are also particular kinks, such as gunplay, somnophilia, I don't know what that is, bondage. Wanting to have sex with a person who's asleep. Oh, uh, and degradation. I looked it up, I don't just know that off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kenzie, why are you so familiar with that? I am a freak in the sheets. <laughs> this book was previously taken down due to the warning, but you can also find them in reviews on my website or feel free to fire... Feel free to message me directly. Your mental health matters. If my mental health matters, then why did you write this book? Okay. Also, full disclosure, I haven't finished. I'm going to. That's okay. So I need you to recap it for me. But I'm up to the part <laughs> where they're about to go into the um, House of Mirrors. But also, <laughs> because I heard it <laughs> I heard it finishes on a cliffhanger. So I can assume what's about to happen. <laughs> Can okay. I, I'll tell you what I think is going to happen. Okay. Okay. And then you tell me if I'm right. All right. Okay. Let me finish my watermelon. <laughs> okay. I'll choke otherwise. Okay. So I'm assuming that Dyer and or... What is her name? What is her name? Adeline? Uh, yeah, Adeline. <laughs> Ad- I say Adeline, not Adeline. Is oh, it Adeline? Okay, anyway. I don't, I don't know. know. I say both. Just say Addie. 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 So Dyer and Addie get taken and... um. There's a feed. I don't know. I reckon there's a live feed, and so Zade is like rushing towards them to try and save them or something. While like Jay's talking in his ear while they're like about to be sacrificed, and then that's okay. a cliffhanger. Interesting. Oh my god, who dies? Who dies? <laughs> the eye emojis. 
You know? I'm scared. I'm scared. All right. All right. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's feel as much as gets you go. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Society has come too far in this essay. I will. <laughs> All right. I'm with you. Uh, I hate to say with 30% left, I am enjoying it. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, God. Would I recommend this to people? <laughs> sure. Just for the lols. Sure, for the lols. What do you mean? <laughs> like, I don't think I'd tell them what it was about. I'd be like, this is a really good book. You should read it. <laughs> and let them figure it out. Themselves. I really enjoyed it. It's got a lot of things in it that I enjoy personally. <laughs> Sorry to um, Kenzie's mum if she's listening. <laughs> I immediately, I messaged you when I read the warning. I was like, child sacrifice! Yeah, no, you really hung up on that. <laughs> and then you, well, I thought it was going to be a bit more terrifying. But then because you were ahead of me, you're like, it's an integral plot point. And I was like, well, now I'm fucking scared. <laughs> However, it is okay. It is an integral plot point. I'm, I'm feeling a lot of confused feelings. And that's, those are my thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Yeah. It's just confused. Okay. Your All turn. Right. My thoughts, feelings, and emotions. I also have very confusing emotions. I mean, also, sorry, while well, we're here, I would let Zay do a lot of naughty things to me. <laughs> you may it's continue. Just, it's just because he's hot. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. And that's all you need. That's all I need. <laughs> all right, my thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Also, agree with the confusing emotions. Like, I don't... I'm also, like, relatively speechless. Like, I don't know what to say about this book. I've heard a lot of... Uh, like TikTok thoughts and stuff and like I quite agreed with and then there was a point where I was enjoying it but um it got to a point where after the House of Mirrors situation is when I decided to stop reading it because I couldn't handle it anymore <laughs> I couldn't do it <laughs> no I didn't because <laughs> I was like I can't no. believe it <laughs> so you're gonna have to find out and tell me later uh, fuck okay <laughs> Because, like, I don't know. I just... Okay, tell me what happens in the House of Mirrors. Yeah, they... I'm not going to say they have sex because he technically, like, rapes her. but Because she doesn't want to do it. But then, like, at the end, it's like... But she does. She likes it. But, like, it's confusing, you know? And I just... I couldn't handle that anymore. That was it. I was just like, I can't fucking do this. And so I stopped. Oh, okay. Do you feel bamboozled? I'm bamboozled. Good. I want to know... I need to know what the cliffhanger is now. Yeah. Just Google... Let's just Google it and figure it out. Yeah, I want to read it. You gonna read it? All right, let me know. I'll tack on when it's released. I'll tack on something on the stories. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, so I didn't have to because of that. Like, I understand it's like a cat and mouse situation, but at the point, at this point, like Adeline or Addie, she's never at an advantage in order to be like knocked down a peg. Like he's just always has the advantage. Is always ahead. He's always in super control. Which I guess is fine if you're a very overpowered hacking government official stalker. Fair enough, you have all the u- utilities available to you. But never once she was she was ever like ahead in or led into a false sense of security for him to like drag her back in. And that just annoyed me. It was just very much all the same interactions. Like, you know, she's def- against him, doesn't want him to do stuff, and then he does stuff, and then she's like, all right, well, I actually kind of like it, Loki, but like, she doesn't want to love him. And yeah, I don't know. It just pissed me off. So in an average relationship, I'm sure like people have kinks, people are into whatever, and then you can have consensual non-consent. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Which like freaks me out, but whatever. So I don't see why this couldn't be a conversation between the two of them because obviously she gets off on being scared. Yeah. Cool. She loves being a little naughty Terrified. freak. I'm into that. All right, we get it. <laughs> This is really your book. <laughs> Give me knives. <laughs> you know how tie- I feel about knives. <laughs> okay. We'll tie you up. Yeah, thank Start you. Start slow. Anyway, so I don't know why this couldn't... When they started actually communicating with each other, I don't know why this couldn't be a conversation. I Once again, we are back to the sexual assault does not need to be used in mainstream media as entertainment. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And yeah, that's what really bugged me. It doesn't like, need to be used in any, sorry, in any form of media or books or literature or anything TV as entertainment. Or, yeah, it yeah. does not need to be sold to me. I should not. Actually, this book was free to me. 
because I think c- c- Kindle, Kindle, <laughs> Kindle Unlimited. Kindle. <laughs> um, but yeah, it should not be used as a form of monetary gain. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But as we said, like sexual assault is like one of those highly invasive forms of harm that can be committed on women and stuff. And like, yeah, it's just it's the only way they can instill true trauma, I guess. But yeah, no. Um, oh, was the gun in her vagina not enough? Yeah, I was, I was like, where have I seen this before? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the second time we've experienced, I've experienced reading gunplay. I need to see my eyes and cauterize my eyes again. The gun's too much. I'll take the knife. The knife is fine. Yeah. The gun Not just... inside me, but... Yeah. <laughs> no, the knife inside you. <laughs> also, I read the Star... Sorry, I read the Star Wars fan fiction where the lightsaber's inside her. So... <gasps> I've been there. I ain't about that life. <laughs> just logistically, it just doesn't make Your sense. Your face is just in. I'm just like, I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what to do. But like, yeah, the, the only worrying thing is like tr- firing the gun. Because like, it, old mate Zaid is fucking trigger happy, bro. I'm sure it wasn't loaded. Maybe it yeah. was. Oh no, it was because he cocked it. I think you can cock a gun without it being loaded. Let sounds me, like, let me it sounds like a euphemism. <laughs> Can I, I'm going to get the FBI on me. Fuck. <laughs> no. yeah, yeah, what's your Google search history? Uh, yep, okay. Yep, nah, it has to be loaded to cock it. Ah. Okay, there we go. We've learned something today. Flickety boo boos. <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't know. I'm very confused with just Zaid and his like just general motivations. Like, it would make sense if his job, as incredibly fucked up as it is, it could definitely mess up a person. Like, I don't know if I just haven't read it to that point yet where that's kind of impacting him and that's why he's just gone super stalker and super obsessive on this one girl. But it's Maybe like, you should you... read the Satan's Affair. Maybe. But then, like, yeah, you're saving women and children and you're so kind to them when you rescue them and stuff, and yet this is how you act towards Eddie. And, like, I'm just so confused. And exactly. I, I, I was like, have care. you not just, like, picked up your, like, what you hunt down? Have you not picked up their... Behaviours. Behaviours, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I th- like. I, again, I don't know if if that comes into play or if it's just completely random. Because like, otherwise, that's just fully demented and deluded. It's completely and utterly insane. I'm just confused because I really like him. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? I like this the is... sweet side of him. Oh my I god! Real sweet. <laughs> Fucking hell! I call him you daddy. Know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Remember? Help me. <laughs> help you you are beyond saving my child um (laughs) (laughs) i remember when uh, i was writing down the notes when Addie met arch or archie (laughs) and i wrote on my notes he seems nice question mark (laughs) 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 we know what happens to him (laughs) but but no it's um talk about handling the situation (laughs) yes (laughs) he handled it very poorly yeah, it just seems so, yeah, just OP that, like, she would make police reports and he would just be, like, hacked it away. And it's just, like, she can't, there's no sense of her winning mm. or at least getting ahead. And that's what pissed me off. It would have been... And the only winning, sorry, that she achieves is orgasming. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> which, that's like, her win. <laughs> which, like, you can do that yourself. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it would have been nice if it was more of that back and forth, but he always had the upper hand. He always, like, was the one to punish her, and, like, she never got, like, a shot into him, or, like, she never yeah. truly, like, clocked him or anything. And I don't know, it just seemed, it just truly seemed, it's heartbreaking and devastating that she is just, she can't win, and I hated that. Because we, lo- mm. we want our protagonists to be able to, like, defend themselves and stand up for themselves, but she just really doesn't. Yeah. Also... I'm feeling very bamboozled because okay. one from you. <laughs> <laughs> Good. How's Mostly, it feel? It hurts. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't tell me. Because <laughs> you were flying ahead and I was like, she's going to finish it before me. All right. Anyway, no, I'm bamboozled because I don't read blobs, as we know. But going from the title and the book cover, Haunting Adeline, 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 Adeline. I thought there was going to be a lot more ghosts. Like, as in more, like, spiritual ghost Like, haunting. actual ghosty ghosts, yeah. yeah There's yeah, one yeah. ghost, and it's kind of just, like, a plot device. Mm. Like, you thought it was going to be more of, like, supernatural-esque. Yeah. Like, I, too, would fall in love with the ghost. 
<laughs> given the opportunity. Now, what is that kink called? <laughs> like a ghost? <laughs> not ne- it's not necrophilia, but like no. what is the ghost equivalent? What is the ghost? What is the co- astral? <laughs> the corporeal fo- fo- Corporeal, yeah. I'm gonna Co- corporeal this. ilia or something. <laughs> Help! I'm attracted to ghosts. <laughs> first, you first you're googling. Does a gun need to be loaded to be cocked? And now something about okay, a ghost. Okay, so I'm googling. <laughs> you are going to be on a list. What kink is it to be attracted to? And the feeling is a gun. <laughs> oh my god! They know. What the f- Attracted to a gun with it without it being loaded. Oh, oh no, they're onto me. A ghost gun. Are you at least in incognito mode? <coughs> no, <laughs> just just free balling it. Just free balling. Raw, just I raw, raw dog, dog life. <laughs> oh yeah, spectrophilia is a fetish that is classified as the paraphilia in which one is attracted to ghosts or spirits. Spectrophiliacs are fantasized about ghosts and often imagine scenarios involving sexual events between themselves or others and spirits. What is ghost sex? <laughs> your, imagination. your imagination. It's masturbating with your imagination. There's a storyline on Grey's Anatomy where they have sex with a ghost. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> she has a brain tumour. Okay. <laughs> that makes it okay? Yes. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. Oh my At god. At what moment did you fall in love with Zade like I did? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Kenzie. <laughs> we, we have never heavily disagreed like on a book before. This is the first time. I'm not disagreeing with you. I just... You have feelings. <laughs> you have big weird feelings. <laughs> from, a, <laughs> from a purely physical standpoint. I'm into him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, I haven't fallen in love with Zaid. I just think he's a fucking psychopath and I hate him. And I hate that it's one of those things that's like, yeah, he's doing good in the world, but then he's doing having this isolated incident with Adeline and I just don't appreciate it. That's all. And I re- especially hated when he had that little sad moment when he was like, I lost a girl today. And it's like, fuck you, bro. I don't fucking care. Boo fucking who? <laughs> Stiff shit. <laughs> Read the fucking room. <laughs> I was gonna DNF then and there, to be honest. And then I just like Claire. just keep going. What? <laughs> that was the moment. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. That was the moment. I was like, that's it. I forgive you. <laughs> I'm into you. Oh my god, Kenzie. I just <sighs> Oh my god. I can't help it. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Alright, we begin with the book, I guess. It's a prologue. Mm-hmm. And it just highlights the stalker situation. Like, is it Adeline though? Any- but yeah, so she's like, that he's at my, he's watching me again or something. And she's like, I don't, I'm scared, but I like it. I'm intrigued. Yeah. She says I'm intrigued a lot, but she does nothing else with it. Um, and then, yeah, chaos ensues. We begin with the book, and Adeline has just inherited a house from her grandmother, or Nana, she calls her, because she passed away, and we've learned that Adeline has a bad relationship with her own mother. She is a, success, a successful writer, author. Author, yes. Love that. Which is why she thinks she can manipulate people's emotions with her words. Which she doesn't do it. At all. That in itself is just uh, DNF worthy. Yeah. <laughs> so she's at a book signing and she notices a man staring at her. And we know this now to be Z or Zaid. Um, and then her that's when her stalking uh, journey ensues. He is like, I'm ready to kill you. It's like, I. She, he's like instant love. Like she's and, like, I'm ready yeah, for you to fall in love. Also, early on in the book... We meet her friend Daya. Daya? Daya? How have you I say it? Daya, yeah. Yeah. And um, one of the first uh, in- first interactions with each other that we get to see is essentially, Addie, you need to get laid because, of course, she does. <laughs> and so we kick off with her unenthusiastically hooking up with a guy named Grayson and then uh, interrupted by the stalker, by Zade, and yeah. he, he scares Grayson away. Yes, he knocks on the door. And then Grayson's like, who is that? Because the, the whole house in itself, the, the manor, gives off haunted, spooky vibes anyway. And, like, we learned that her great-grandmother <clears throat> was murdered there anyway, so. 
And so we are bouncing back between Adeline's point of view and Zade's point of view. The manipulator versus the shadow. I liked that though. And I liked the incorporation of the letters in between every every other chapter too. It was pretty good. Like I enjoyed the, set, the setup and the structure of it, but like just the actual content itself was a bit gnarly. And then we get like Zayed's point of view when he first set his eyes on Adeline. He was just in a bookshop. Uh, I forget what he was doing. Actually, well, he was walking past and he saw her picture and was like, "I'm in love." <laughs> yep, that's it and therefore his stalking journey ensues and yeah we learned that he's heavy into computer science and hacking and he works for like a government-ish organization or he's like an anti-government organization to take down politicians yeah, and I like think he, child yeah, trafficking just, uh, an independent organization to yeah take down child yeah. traffickers yeah and he yeah, instant infatuation with Adeline and it just goes extreme real quick I feel like it would have been better if he like maybe wasn't just so extreme off the bat I suppose he, you can argue that he wasn't because he would have was going to kill Grayson, but then he decided not to. But he like he hadn't spoken one word to this girl. I know, I know. he has never spoken any. One hundred and fifty pages in is when they first I think speak almost. Yeah, like like one they text. On one. <laughs> they text. Yeah, apologies for potential cooking in the background. Um, and then it's just like a lot of chapters of the gradual. Z breaking into Adeline's house, leaving roses and stuff as like a token of his presence, and she is freaking the fuck out. And he's drinking whiskey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stealing her alcohol too. And um, Adeline ends up going. She's she's renovating the house, um, and she finds some diaries from a great grandmother named Gigi. And we learned that Gigi was murdered in this house, and that she too had a stalker situation. Yes. So literally, history repeating itself. Um, and her, it's her great grandmother. I, I think so. Yeah, yeah her great grandmother um, was El Murdiode. <laughs> by El Ronaldo. <laughs> if I, if, well, we don't know that. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't know that. Oh, and I, but I, so who do you think killed her? I think Frank. Yes, what same. I read. Yeah, <laughs> I reckon he could have had an infatuation as well, perhaps. Yeah, it is not hashtag confirmed, but well, because I haven't finished, but I'm sure it'll. Uh, it'll be revealed. I'm gonna look up maybe spoilers. Maybe it's revealed in the next book. Maybe oh, I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna look up spoilers on Reddit later, and I'll tell my I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. Just tell me who killed her. Actually, All I'm right. gonna finish the book. Wait for me. <laughs> Let me know <laughs> what you want to do. And so, pretty much, this Adeline is taking upon herself to solve because Gigi's murder has been unsolved for like seventy odd years, and because she feels like the strong connection, I guess, with the house and with the stalker situation, she feels heavily inclined to solve this murder. And so, this becomes a very integral part of the plot, alongside Zade stalking her and manipulating her and assaulting her and blah 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 blah. And then we get a lot of point of views chapters of Zaid working in his organization and how uh like who he's after at this point in time and he's currently on a mission to take down four political senators who are involved in a leaked video of them child sacrificing mm. for god knows why because they're weird yeah also i didn't realize until it's like explicitly spelled out to me because i was confused because i was like if mark knew her great grandmother I was like, he's old as fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He and was then, like seven or something. Yeah, or ten. And um, yeah, he's so, old as fuck and, in this book too. And yeah, and then it said that he is well into his eighties. And I was like, gross. <laughs> yeah, very gross. And we actually get a chapter of Zade actually, uh, like storming a warehouse to save some girls, and we learn like. He has a friend, Jay, who's like his eyes and ears. He hacks the cameras and splices and all that stuff. And then there's like a chick named Ruby who just never comes up again. But it helps um, mm. make sure the girls feel safe and comfortable. Because the last thing you want is to be it's like man, yeah. handed off by with another strange, strange man. Yeah. Um, so, and we get that sense of confusion now because he's a fucking hero, essentially. Undercover vigilante hero. and then But he's doing this to Addy and it's like, what the fuck? And so Addie and Dyer decide to like continue to live their lives. Addie has made constant police reports of Zaid's presence and she eventually tells Dyer and Dyer's like, what the fuck, bro? Fucking leave. Mm. And Addie's like, no, for so she just doesn't leave. That pisses but me then, off. Dumb bitch. It, um, <coughs> dumb bitch. 
you find out that like Daya, like not explicitly what she does for work, but just that she helps like an organization or whatever, an organization. Yeah. And then straight away, I was like, oh fuck, well like Zay's her boss. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zay's her boss. Yeah, and then because and then she says like, oh my god, do you think it's Z? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, even at my point where I DNF, like at this point, if. This, if her stalker is able to hack incredibly well and be able to cover up his traces really well, why hasn't she just outright thought, all right, someone in my organisation is fucking with you? Why yeah. didn't she dig any deeper? Yeah, and even when she figures out that, oh, it is Z or whatever. Oh, like, no, she, she, actually, you... she actually never figured it out. Like, it's never explicitly Oh, well, she has this su- suspicion. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, why don't you go either to him or, like, to someone and say, hey. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't get it, like... Because she mentions, like, it could be Z. And then, because Adeline was talking to her about going to that gala with Zach. Yeah, and because, and then, um yeah, and then Zade's like, two of my employees are putting up her cameras. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, come on. Anyway, anyway, Eddie and Daya go out and they run into some potential hookups, uh, Arch and, like, Max and some folks. They were into, like, mafia shit, powerful yeah. families, whatever. Um, Arch. Just your average you know stuff yeah, that goes on <laughs> for sure absolutely uh, at this point z is texting her being like you know i don't want another man to like touch you and all that shit and then she gets a little brave and a little cocky and she you know out in the i don't know sunroom or whatever she's letting arch like touch her and all that type of stuff and then inevitably that causes him to down the road get his get his hands chopped off and like tortured yes. and essentially i'm going to assume die cuz i haven't seen but him also, since he like warned her and then she's like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and get this man killed. Here is the thing that pisses me off. Why is he allowed to intimidate her, but she's not allowed to show a sign of fear, and then she's then punished for it? <laughs> yeah. It's well, bullshit. she wasn't really punished for it. it was... No, she wasn't, but like, it does affect her from here on out, because now these fucking powerful families and mafia people are kind of after her. And she this expresses that, and then, and then she expresses that to Zaid. Yeah, it's just not fair. She just has no winning moment. Anyway, so yeah, now these mafia folks are all questioning her and she feels incredibly unsafe and like, yeah. just move house because that's what everyone wants you to do. But no, she's stupidly stubborn because she's intrigued and slightly turned on by everything. Oh, she's very turned on by everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, no, I actually love that this book, um, just back to like, just the darkness of the real world. You know, we always talk about, our, or in the news, there's, it's always like those rings, like child rings and like mm. pedophilia and all those... And as a parent, I am terrified. <laughs> of course, of course. But, like, they, these things are happening in the real world and we don't know about it. Like, who f- who fucking knows who's, you know, actually child sacrificing, like, children yeah. and stuff. And, yeah, it, it, it's one of those things where, like, everyone is, like, aware that something like that is happening. But, like, you just never know who it is or, like, how do you take such an organisation down? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because there's always going to be, I guess, another higher up somewhere. Or another group. Yeah. And, like, this this book is also kind of good at informing the public of these sorts of uh, places as well. Because it mentions, like, dark web and, like, red rooms and all that type of stuff, which are very nasty, gnarly places in general. Yes. Um, but, yeah, while Z is trying to intimidate her, Adeline is also constantly challenging him and provoking. But, like, that is her right. She is allowed to show that she is not intimidated. But, unfortunately, mm-hmm. it's the consequence of that which also... Which just fucks her up and traumatizes her. Um, so that sucks. And then Z finally like encounters Adeline at her house at one point and they come face to face. They play like hide and seek. And this is where the gunplay assault situation happens. Yeah, not a good time. Fun, fun, fun. I never thought I'd read that like once in my life, but now that I've read it twice. Now I like... that I've read it twice, yeah. Now that I've read it two and a half times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and it's so funny. Um this is a funny part because they're still trying to investigate the politicians and try and get into where they are to kind of bring this little ring down. Um, J to Z is like, well, I'm getting you into this gentleman's club or whatever. And then Z's like, fuck J, you want me to hang out with a bunch of rapists? And it's like, bro, you are a rapist. (laughs) Like, what are you talking about? This is your, this is your shindig. And then also they kind of make, like make the reader try and forgive him by, getting him to help the girl who is just letting men burn cigarettes on her. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> um, 
and he realizes that all the girls are kind of drugged so he gets her out but then it's like okay if you go and get all the girls out there's going to be more girls that come in like you're never going to be able to end this unless you just like shoot them all in the head good night yeah i suppose he's just trying to like just destroy it at its source otherwise more heads and people are going to pop up but I think to yeah to destroy it at its source is to kill yeah the men. It's not get the girls out right yeah, now. It's kill no. the men so that no more girls come in. Yeah, and then yeah, it'd be suspicious because as well because he he's a face that they're not familiar with, and suddenly girls are going missing. Like two plus two, is five. And um, <clears throat> so Zaid is being buddy buddies with this political senator Mark because he needs to get close and to figure out where the like where the rituals are taking place and all this type of stuff and all sorts of information. Uh, Mark in, has has his eyes set on Addie at like a cafe or something and then Zade's like oh fuck now she's actually gonna inadvertently be involved mm. um, because Mark has his sights set and so that's how she gets involved and then they, ha- they have to pretend to be lovers and stuff all the while he is stalking harassing and like sexually assaulting her and terrifying her mm-hmm. but also all of a sudden Mark's like ooh I'm going to go after this adult instead of a teenage girl. I was like, why the switch up, Marky Mark? <laughs> yeah, why, boy? Your new friend, you don't think your new friend plays the same game? Yeah, so Adeline is now inadvertently amongst this potential trafficking situation that Zade is trying to take down. Alright, take over, Kenzie. They go to a fancy ball and they have sex in the cinema. Fun. <sighs> that was so fucking gross. Oh, they don't have sex. He fingers her. <laughs> What? No, he rapes her. <laughs> they don't have sex. He rapes her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just he hate this rape. back and forth. She's like, she really doesn't want it. And then it's like, but yeah, I'm scared. I'm horny. Like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's so gross. It's so stupid. <laughs> so frustrating. Um, yeah. And then they go to Satan's fair. A fair. Yeah. A fair. Oh, I get it now. Because that's the. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, they go to Satan's Affair, um, which is like a series of haunted houses, I guess, in a field that they travel and they come around each year. That's fun. I Very love a la situation. the night circus. Yes. Just pops up. Yes. Um, so they go to that and smart girl Addie, because Zaid isn't with her. Zaid, a.k.a. Zach, a.k.a. Z. Um, it's not with her, but Mark and all his colleagues are there. The four of the four pedophiles who sacrifice young children for their blood rituals. Um, and Mark's like, "Where's Zach?" And Addie, yeah, the best buds. And Addie's like, "Oh, he just went to the bathroom." Because she's like, "Well, now he, Mark thinks I'm not here alone." Well, her and Dyer. So like, anyway. And then, um, so they go into the haunted house, and Mark is ogling a young girl. Takes a photo of her. Gross. Um, and then Zade sees that. But Zade also, the young girl then, thinks that Zade is after her. Yeah, I was really confused by this yeah. interaction. I thought that and she then was, I was in like, on is it. She... Yeah, same. I was like, are you in on this? Like, are you trying to kidnap the girls as well? Or yeah. Because like... the girl yeah. winks at Mark. Oh, see, but we haven't gotten that far, clear. Maybe she is in on it. No, I've gone past this part. Yeah, yeah. But like, it does seem like she threatens Z and stuff, and Z is finding it really amusing. And I yeah, feel like, she has a I knife. Feel like she's, I feel like she's in on it, yeah. Yeah, she has a kniffy. Yeah, and then she, she's like, all right, there's this man that's stalking these two girls, and then there's, like, an interaction with Mark and his buddies. They're, like, talking about oh, how they missed two girls because the van was ready or something, and then Z was like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? And then he's like... We're not talking about your girlfriend. And then, like, nothing happens. I don't know. They move on. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I was really, I was really, like, haphazardly paying attention. Like, I was so confused. Anyway, and then they go to the haunted mirrors. Well, Adeline's in the haunted mirrors. And apparently she'd been in there for two hours. And, like, her and Z go at it. Because Z has obviously manipulated or told the guard that it's closed or something. She must have done something. Because okay, but they... Di is still there. Is he, she just like, oh, okay, Addie must have gone home without me. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. And that's a phone call at the end, which I decided to stop. She's like, you were oh, gone for okay, two well, hours and it scared me. And it yeah. really upset me. And Adeline was like, sorry. Um, <sighs> and actually, no, the last, the last line before I decided to stop was, I think Di said to her, why do you look and smell like you just got fucked? Because she did. Because <laughs> she did. Non-consensually, well, consensually, non-consensually, I don't know. 
But yeah, like yeah. they actually go at it in the Hall of Mirrors and it's a very like kinky thing. It's like, you know, having mirrors all over. Like he's forcing her to look at herself and all that type of stuff. The pee-pee yeah. goes in. <laughs> I'm always scared with these types of novels, sorry, that there's going to be anal. And it's like, that's my line. Like, <laughs> I can deal with it. No, it wasn't. No, no, no. It wasn't, it wasn't that. Okay. It was wrong, wrong hole. We read a book and there was anal. And I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Goes in the other hole. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, yeah, like that is truly yeah, my line. Like. And also and also in her also in her mouth. But but yeah, like they're just full on well he I don't I don't even know how to describe it. He, he assaults her. He assaults her in in the Hall of Mirrors and it's a very weird thing. Uh, and then yeah, I stopped. I just hate I don't know, like if you feel like you can't es- maybe this is me being incredibly weak minded. If it was me and I felt like I couldn't escape and I didn't want this, I would just good night, you know? <laughs> I'm out. I'm unsubscribing from life. He can't have me if I'm unsubscribed. Yeah, well, that's what I said. <laughs> Again, I, as I said, this is me being very weak-minded. If this was me, if I was Adeline, I'd be like, good night. You are never seeing but me I've again. I've always said, though, if I was in like a horror movie situation, that, yeah, like I would rather take myself out than yeah. be taken out. Also, do you think I'm balding? <laughs> like, this is karma for you having feelings about this book. <laughs> <laughs> your hair is falling true. out true um yeah like i so i don't know in this situation because i'm not scared enough to take myself out <laughs> okay. like i'd have to be a little bit more scared <laughs> all right what, what would he have to do what more does he have to do to make you scared a chainsaw <sighs> but like he's not like okay i know he's not he doesn't want to murder her though he wants to love her yeah this her is to love him so like the 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 sexual assault and all that that's a whole ball game on its own if we took that out of it He's just been a little bit creepy. A little. All right. A little. I like the roses. And also, if he wants to murder for me, go ahead. We already know I can forgive murder. <laughs> I mean, murdering for me is a bit... I can agree with it. But, like, he's just too possessive for... There's, just... like, this um video on TikTok going around, sorry. And it's, like, someone asking, like, would you kill for your kids? And then some yeah. people, like, hesitate. And I'm, like, yes. Like, straight away, no questions <laughs> asked. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that for you. Yeah. But also at the gala, sorry, bringing it back a little bit, we learn more about Gigi's murder investigation and how Mark mm. knew of her and his information about his father, Frank, who was friends with John, and mm. how John, you know, was drinking and getting abusive. And, like, yeah. we also learn... And I learnt... think Mark knows that his dad did it. I reckon so. And then, um, yeah, so... We can quickly talk about like Gigi. From what I, what we've learnt, uh, Gigi had a stalker named Ronaldo. He worked with the mafia family. Um, it took a long time for them to really find a picture of what he looked like. And yeah, like he just started out stalking her, similar to Z stalking Adeline. And it eventually be- became and like an affair situation because John was very like I suppose emotionally negligent, and he would just like go off and do his own thing. He was also gambling away their money. Yep causing all sorts of trouble uh then having relations with the mafia itself and then ronaldo like saved his life being like all right he can work off his debt and then that's how there's a bit of involvement there and inadvertent like passing of each or knowing of each other like john knows of ronaldo but ronaldo ronaldo knows a lot and yeah it was just a whole thing and then ronaldo because they're about to lose their house so yeah ronaldo paid off john's debts yeah yeah and uh, which uh, John at the time didn't know about. See, I liked that this, there was more than just the, the stalking because I always thought it was just going to be the stalking. But I'm glad there's like obviously other plots at play. Yeah, and then Addie finds a note from Gigi that's like, T has found me. John, if you're reading this, it what? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Gets cut off. But, w- but if, you, if, you, if you're the one who murdered her, would you just not get rid of that letter to begin with? I think that's why it was hidden in the attic. But like she surely she would have had time to have written one mm. more word. Also. Or at least yeah, a letter. If you're writing it. Don't write John, if you find this, just write it was. Just and be then like the name. Or just yeah. write the name. Just be like Frank something or whatever. Just write yeah, an a name. Yeah, I think it was Frank. I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. This is this is messed up. I don't know. It's I don't understand why it's five hundred pages. Like it could easily be like at least four fifty. Because like at there were at times where I was getting a little bit bored and it was like, can we, something happen? If it didn't take them 150 pages to start talking to each other. Yeah, yeah. Very slow. But no, I'm also all for the suspense. I liked the build-up of the suspense because it was, 
you know, it, it capu- encapsulates the horror genre. Oh yeah, I thought I like the suspense, but I thought it was suspense because he was gonna kill her. Yeah, not yeah. that he was gonna fuck her. He just wants to marry her and have and have her have all these babies. Oh, also, immediate one star, cock and cunt. <clears throat> yep, <laughs> not it, and no not condom it. to be seen. I haven't got that far yet. I mean, he certainly <laughs> didn't wrap the gun. No. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine, like, the gun was just, like, a bit rusty. And it's just like, oh. she, needs a, she needs a tender shot. I just, like, <laughs> That's it an would be so painful. Yeah, it would have. Only if you're brave enough. Not that she was brave enough. It was kind of forced upon her, but yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We need a book where men get a gun either up their ass or... <laughs> <laughs> no? It was just in their mouth. No, like, no, they don't deserve just in the mouth. No, they, it needs to go up somewhere. <laughs> okay. Yeah, look, I don't know. People are all, like, really defensive about this book if you're not really into, like, these darker themes and stuff, which is fine, but, like, you can still be critical of if it's boring or if it's slow-paced or this, that, and the other. I'm always very much, and I think I just said this, like, in the last book we read. I was like, if you're reading a book and it doesn't speak to you, just don't finish it. Like, exactly. That's fine. Yeah, I'm done with her pretend. Yeah. Her but confusion. like apart from the sexual assault, I am into this book. That's so f- that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I respect that for you, Kenzie. But yeah, I'm just over like, yeah. It, it's it really is just coming down to like she. There's n- no point. She is advantageous or has an advantage in anything, and like it's just it's just yeah heartbreaking to see. Like who knows? Again, maybe in the last thirty percent, she might do something wacky to to bring it home. But yeah, I just don't know. Okay, will you read the next one, or do you just want me to read it and tell you what happened? I just can't believe this even has a second book. To be honest, <laughs> what what else could? Surely the stalking has come to an end. I don't know. Um, yeah, you can read it and tell me if you really want to. Like even on a potty, you can just do a full recap I'll at do your natural. <laughs> uh, yeah, at, at my your, natural reading speed. At your natural one point five reading speed. Yeah, yeah, you can tell me. That's fine. We need to be more open with that sort of thing. Like, if I'm not interested in a book and you are, and, like, you can just give me a whole potty episode of just recapping, and I'll just be like, yep. ask questions. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, cool. If you're, if right. you, that's if you're, because if you're still really, really into this book. All right. Seeing as now there is no natural conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where do we go from here? Um, we go to the stars that listen, <laughs> and. I will recap on the stories when this is posted about how I feel about the ending for everyone who follows along on the stories. Yep, yep, yep. And then after this, I'm going to scoop my brain out and put it in a fucking bowl of ice so I can calm down. (laughs) You need to reset your body. I need a reset, yeah, for sure. Uh, Well, at least now we just get to start reading Christmas books. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, For anyone who doesn't know the stars that listen... Um, is a segment we do at the end of our podcast which just we find funny five star reviews and funny one star reviews or just like five star and one star reviews that we kind of relate to um we always start with the one star reviews because we like to end on a positive note and i have several Uh, but would you like to go first i would like to go first i have two two one star reviews but then there's a third one just within the in the screenshot all right my First couple of one star reviews. Girl, girlies see rape and a tattooed male with scars and say slay, bestie. It's a shame though. <laughs> the cover is pretty as fuck. <laughs> and then another one is another one star. I always thought that Zaid was a pretty name. Um, I no longer think so. <laughs> and then my last one star review is I don't know if I should be more concerned about the fact that this book has a rating above 4.0 stars or the fact that it romanticizes the justification of sexual assault and stalking with oh but I'm a good guy because I save women and children that's pretty much encapsulates how I feel alright so my I have a few one stars didn't read it but this bitch I have beef, beef with adores this book so one star <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just going to pretend like I never read it. Please play along. So you're telling me he is trying to fight against trafficking and just wants to save victims at the same time, but at the same time he abuses her and calls her little girl, just like he calls multiple victims of this book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, yeah, there's a very significant... And then I have one more. 
So uh, we yes, never mentioned okay. it, and it's very important that he calls her Little Mouse because it's the cat and mouse, and she calls oh, yes. him Kitty Cat, which is fun. But then she just stops doing it for a long time, yeah. and like, yeah. Anyway, yeah, sorry. So on. my last ones are is quote You're so fucking creamy. Unquote. He rasps. What? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. All right. Five stars. All right. My, my, I'll go first. All right. My first five star. The woman was too stunned to speak. In brackets, I had that one. <laughs> complimentary. And then another one is I don't don't normally read dark romance, but shit. After this, maybe I should start winky smirky face. <laughs> Alright, I have a two now. Um, after further inspection, I fear I love this book. <laughs> That's you. And, and no, this one is me. <laughs> Reading this book is not enough. I need to fuck Zane. <laughs> Oh, lovely. We are two completely different people at the end of the day, Kenzie. I'm glad we can actually disagree. Well, not disagree, but we can have opposing ideas and feelings. Yes, that is fine. Where the one brain cell has now split. Yeah, officially. All right, as always, thank you all for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, sorry that we didn't finish the book yet. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> Claire's not sorry. Um, catch us on the gram. Letterbox underscore book underscore club. From there, you'll find our link tree in our bio, where you'll find us in all the places, TikTok, Spotify, Google Podcast, Rip Soon, um, Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, if you're old school. <laughs> yeah, you shit on me when I named every single social media. <laughs> you get to do it willy-nilly. <laughs> I can stop, but I feel like you'd get upset at me if I didn't mention all of them. I haven't been mentioning them for a very long time. Uh, link in the, link in the bio. Oh, yeah, just what's, the bet? what's the bet? I just cut everything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> bet. <laughs> Link in the bio. Bye. Uh, and ne- and check us out for for tomorrow because oh, we're going to have a special episode. Tomorrow's bonus episode, which will be just uh, a spooky ep. Yeah, spooky things. Ghost experiences, um, creepy places in Australia. Perhaps um, creepy or spooky Australian horror stories or something. Creepy, spooky Australian horror stories. We can talk about stories. the time we went to Beechworth. We went to Beechworth. That's actually number two most haunted places, which mm. in hindsight was pretty disappointing. But anyway. Luke went to Ararat, so I will see if he has any Ooh. spooky stories from there. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Cool, cool, cool. All right, check us out tomorrow, but also check us out next week when we dip into the Plated Prisoner series. Woo! Woo. Bye. All right, catch us on the flip side. Bye. Stay safe out there. Hello, everybody. It is me, Mackenzie. Um, just popping on um, a little solo sort of uh, update regarding the haunting of Adeline. Um, so I finished the book and we are left on a cliffhanger of one of Zade's stings going wrong, I guess. And they get caught out and he and Jay cornered after an explosion and... Jay is sort of looking behind Zaid as there is a gun to Zaid's head and he says, oh my god, it's you. And then, I can't remember if it's at the beginning of the hunting Adeline or at the end of this book, but Addie is in a car accident as well. And we also find out that Claire Williams, Mark's wife, is behind everything. Um, Also, I have nearly finished the second book, The Hunting of Adeline, and it's probably my own fault because there were no trigger warnings at the start of the book and I probably should have gone looking for them, but the book takes a very, very dark turn uh, and goes to very dark, despicable places. Um, Once again, I am asking the question why sexual assault is being used as monetary gain. Um, or sold as a form of entertainment, I guess. Um, I just say to anyone, if you have any, like, triggering, if any sexual assault sort of vibes um, trigger you in any way that maybe you don't touch the second book, yeah, there's quite a few scenes from the onset and throughout that are quite um, graphic in depicting sexual assault. Um, Just, like a man sexually assaulting Addie and other women or Addie being assaulted with various items. Um, Also a lot of gore and blood play and knife play, um, knife torture and things like that. So there's also a very disturbing scene where Addie and some other women have to 
kill some other women that have been tortured and I had a visceral reaction to that scene and didn't think that I could continue reading but I did and here we are um yeah probably not the best book to be made um I probably will finish just to see where it's going um but I probably will not be recommending it to anyone thanks bye